pieces of service music that will be that we will be using during the Advent season. Just those two. Okay. And now to begin our service, we have our introit. Hymn 56, verses 1 and 2. O come, O come, Emmanuel. The opening acclamation for Advent is in your Sunday service leaflet. Blessed are you, holy and living one. You come to your people and set them free. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which your son Jesus Christ came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day 
when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal. Through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. Our first reading is from the book of Isaiah. The word that Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised above the hills. All the nations shall stream to it. Many people shall come and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his path. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations, and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation. Neither shall they learn war anymore. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Please join me in reading Psalm 122. I was glad when they said to me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. Now our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city that is at unity with itself, to which the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord assembly of Israel to praise the name of the Lord. For there are the thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Peace be within your walls and quietness within your towers. For my brethren and companions sake, I pray for your prosperity because of the house of the Lord our God. I will seek to do you good. The second reading is from the book, the letter to the Romans. We know time it is. We know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep, for salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone; the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and darkness, drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provisions for the flesh to gratify the des its desires. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. We continue with our sequence hymn, number 11, Awake My Soul and With the Sun.
The Holy Gospel of our Savior, Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. On the Mount of Olives, Jesus said to his disciples privately about his coming. But about that day and hour, no one knows, neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. For as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day Noah entered the ark, and they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away. So too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field, one will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding meal together. One will be taken, and one will be left. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this. If the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would have not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. This is the Gospel of Christ. I was uh, very pleased when Pastor Kit um, asked if I would uh, talk with you folks, speak with you, have a conversation, the current lingo, on a Sunday in Advent. And I was very glad to do that because I used to, anyway, love to preach during Advent, especially when I was younger and there was all the fire and brimstone associated with Advent. Most a lot of that has been gone now with a focus on Jesus' first coming rather than on his second coming. But uh, still, this first Sunday in Advent preserves uh, the, this image of the second coming of Christ. And I used to get a lot of juice out of that. The older I get, that's not necessarily the case. We could focus on the second coming and the fire and the brimstone, and um, we could talk about how that's happening. Actually, somebody said to me last week, gee, I think we are in the end times, and it's not hard for us to stretch our minds to see that with disease, with uh, ecological disasters, with war, with famine, it's all around us. You know that, and I know that. Another thing Advent sorry, focuses us on is our own um, day of the Lord. When we uh, are faced with our own judgment, if you will. And uh, I have a, a personal story that I like to share about that. And so I was trying to bring these ideas together to what to, to speak with you about this morning. And so some people might say, well, David, you chose the easy way out because I'm going to read to you, not my words, but Truman Capote's words from his memoir a Christmas memory. And I think it helps us focus on the coming of the kingdom of God, the coming of the kingdom, not their 
and then, but here and now. Imagine a morning in late November, a coming of winter morning more than 20 years ago. It's much longer now. Consider the kitchen of a spreading old house in a country town. A great black stove is its main feature, but there is also a big round table and a fireplace with two rocking chairs placed in front of it. Just today, the fireplace commenced its seasonal tour. The story takes place in Alabama. A woman with shorn white hair is standing at the kitchen window. She's wearing tennis shoes and a shapeless gray sweater over her summery calico dress. She is small and sprightly, like a bantam hen. But due to a long youthful illness, her shoulders are pitifully hunched. Her face is remarkable, not unlike Lincoln's, craggy like that, and tinted by sun and wind. But it is delicate, too, finely boned, and her eyes are sherry-colored and timid. Oh my, she exclaims, her breath smoking the window pane. It's fruitcake weather. The person to whom she is speaking is myself. I am seven. She is 60-something. We are cousins, very distant ones, and we have lived together, well, as long as I can remember. Other people inhabit the house, relatives, and though they have power over us and frequently make us cry, we are not, on the whole, too much aware of them. We are each other's best friend, she calls me Buddy, in memory of a boy who was formerly her best friend. The other Buddy died in the 1880s when she was still a child. She's still a child. I knew it before I got out of bed, she says, turning away from the window with purposeful excitement in her eyes. The courthouse bell sounded so clear and cold there were no birds singing. They've gone to a warmer country. Oh, buddy, stop stuffing biscuits and fetch our, bug fetch our buggy. Help me to find my hat. We've 30 kick tickets to bake, 30 fruitcakes to bake. The story here is that every year, the two of them save money to buy money to bake fruitcakes and they send fruitcakes to uh, people they've met who have stopped by. They sent one to President Roosevelt when he was in the White House. She sent them to, to people that she, they have encountered. And every year they, they save money to buy the ingredients and uh, to collect what they need. So, <clears throat> So then, they're ready. One way or another, we do each year accumulate Christmas savings, a fruitcake fund. These monies we keep hidden in an ancient bead purse under a loose board, under the floor, under a chamber pot in my friend's bedroom. The purse is seldom removed from this safe except to make a deposit, or as happens every Saturday, a withdrawal. For on Saturdays, I am allowed 10 cents to go to the picture show. My friend has never been to a picture show, nor does she intend to. I'd rather hear you tell the story, buddy, the way I can imagine it more. Besides, a person my age shouldn't squander their eyes. When the Lord comes, let me see him clear.
Fast forward to Christmas morning. Presents have been opened, They've had a big southern breakfast. And Truman writes, well, I'm disappointed. Who wouldn't be? With socks, a Sunday school shirt, some handkerchiefs, and a hand-me-down sweater, and a year's subscription to religious magazine for children. It makes me boil, it really does. My friend has a better haul, a sack of satsumas. That's her best present. I think those are raisins. She is proudest, however, of a white wool shawl knitted by her married sister. But she says her favorite gift is the kite I built her. And it is very beautiful, though not as beautiful as the one she made for me, which is blue and scattered with gold and green good conduct stars. And my, moreover, my name is painted on it, Buddy. And my friend says, Buddy, the wind is blowing. The wind is blowing, and nothing will do till we've run to a pasture below the house where Queenie, their dog, has scooted to bury her bone, and where, a winter hence, Queenie will be buried too. There, plunging through the healthy waist-high grass, we unreal our kites, feel them twitching at the string like a skyfish as they swim into the wind. Satisfied, sun-warmed, we sprawl on the grass and peel raisins and watch our kites cavort. Soon I forget the socks and the hand-me-down sweater. I'm as happy as if we'd already won the $50,000 grand prize in that coffee naming contest. My, how foolish I am, my friend cries, suddenly alert. Like a woman remembering too late, she has biscuits in the oven. You know what I've always thought? She asks in a tone of discovery and not smiling at me, but at a point beyond. I've always thought a body would have to be sick and dying before they saw the Lord. And I imagine that when he came to me, it would be like looking at the Baptist window, pretty as colored glass through the sun pouring through. Such a shine you don't know it's getting dark. And it's been a comfort to think of that shine taking away all the spooky feelings. But I'll wager it never happens. I'll wager, at the very end, a body realizes the Lord has already shown himself that things as they are, and her hand circles in a gesture that gathers clouds and kites and grass and queenie pawing the earth over her bone, just what they always seem was seeing him. As for me, I could leave the world today with heaven in my eyes. And this was our last Christmas together. I invite you to stand as you're able as we affirm our faith in the ancient words of the Nicene Creed as found on page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, the, the Father, Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, 
the only Son of God, eternally begotten, God, 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 light from light, true God from true God, begotten but not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made with you. For our sake, he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are according to Form 3, found on page 385 of your prayer book. I ask your prayers for people throughout the world, for Rob, our bishop, for Shannon, bishop of Vermont, for Thomas, bishop of Maine, for St. Peter's Episcopal Church, Londonderry, in the, cycle of Epis in the cycle of the Anglican cycle, the prayer for Nippon Siko K, in the diocese cycle of prayer, for this gathering and for all ministers and people, pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may, be they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed for those who have died. I ask your prayers for Alberta, Alex, Anne, Audrey, Elise, Gary, Gordon, Helen and Paul, Jane, Jim, Cassidy, Paula, Robert and Will. I ask your thanksgiving for all the blessings of this life. I invite your prayers of thanksgiving either silently or aloud. Amen. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day.
Assist us, Lord, in living hopefully into the future. In the face of change, help us to set unnecessary fears aside and to recognize our potential for creative response. Help us to develop a reasonable optimism when confronted by the new and to guard against our own defensiveness. Be with us as we remember and celebrate former times and keep us from unreasonable yearning for them, which takes us from the work you have set before us in our time. All this we ask in the name of your child, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Turning to page 360 in the Book of Common Prayer, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And may the peace of Christ be always with you. Let us greet one another with a sign of God's peace. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. Our offertory hymn this morning is number 73, The King Shall Come When Morning Dawn.
Our service continues with the Eucharistic prayer on the laminated card in your pew. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious God, source of life abundant. From before time you made ready the creation. Your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being. Sun, moon, and stars, earth, winds, and waters, and every living thing. You made us in your image and taught us to walk in your ways. But we rebelled against you and wandered far away. And yet, as a mother cares for her children, you would not forget us. Time and again, you called us to live in the fullness of your love. And so this day, we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings through eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we sing. deliver us from the power of sin and death, and to reveal the riches of your grace, you looked with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. <clears throat> Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick, and proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself, yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. On the night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it and gave it to them and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. Again, he gave thanks to you gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me.
Now gathered at your table, O God of all creation, and remembering Christ crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer to you our gifts of bread and wine and ourselves a living sacrifice. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your spirit over the whole earth and make us your new creation, the body of Christ given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with blessed Mary, the God-bearer, and all your saints from every tribe and language and people and nation to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. God of promise, you have prepared a banquet for us. Happy are those, those who are called to the supper of Lamb. Lamb. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. This is God's table, and all are welcome.
post-communion prayer is found on page 366. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, we give you thanks for the spiritual, spiritual food, food of the most precious Christ. body and blood of your, your Son, Son, our Savior, Savior Jesus Christ, Christ. and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And may the sun of righteousness shine upon you and scatter the darkness from before your path. And may the blessing of our God, Creator, Redeemer and Sustainer, be with you and remain with you this day and always. Please be seated for announcements. Are there announcements from the congregation? Tina. And are we moving pews after church? Are we going to move pews after church? So if folks are inclined to stay and help us move pews after church so that on Friday all that you have to do is come and set up for the fair, you know, grab your coffee, grab a snack, and then come back and, and Tina and crew can direct us as to where the pews will go. Huge thanks to David Plank for preaching this morning. Thank you so much. It's always lovely to um, hear what you have to say. And I'm inspired for coming Advents and for the rest of this Advent. So thank you. And it also enabled me to fill in for 
a colleague at my other gig yesterday instead of sermon writing, so thank you. Any other announcements? Lots of this stuff is in your bulletin, so take your bulletins with you and, and attend to them. Bree? Our recessional hymn this morning is number 66, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord.